Con Expo 2023, the Bobcat booth, we had two new machines unveiled this year. First, the S7X. I think we've seen some of the electric machines like the T7X that has been out for a little while now. It is not quite being used yet, but we have not seen the rubber tire version. You know, one thing that a lot of people seem to ask is the runtime on these machines. What is that? And you know, the, the, the rubber track machine, they're saying four hours because you're moving those big heavy tracks, you know, you're turning on uh, pavement or dirt or whatever, but the rubber tire machine is just kind of rolling a lot less friction, a lot less power consumption. So you're gonna get almost double the run time on the S7X. Pretty cool, but we've kind of seen these electric machines. Now what's really cool that they just released is the Rogue X platform. So although the Rogue X is a concept machine, the loader arm and bucket here is an attachment. What this is, is an electric power unit. So we can literally take this loader arm and bucket assembly off and run different attachments. They said they could put a mower on it, a brush cat, um, it could be a light plant, or it could just be a simple mobile powder unit to run electricity on the job site. So you wouldn't have any of this loader arm and stuff. You just got a base platform with the tracks. And this is using the same power unit right now, uh, 60 kilowatts uh, battery right now with the potential of going, doubling that to 120 kilowatts of power. So it's basically the same drive system and battery as on the S and T 7X loaders all on a mobile platform that is universal. So this is a concept, but there's a lot of stuff in the works already to add attachments to this. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens in the future. You can see the grapple bucket on it that now is electric. So this grapple bucket has electric actuators and that's gonna be kind of the norm for the electric machines to have actual electric um, attachments. We can kind of sneak over to the uh, S76 or S7X here. It's got a big broom on it. <clears throat> and you can see that it's all electric on a broom. So there's a lot of electric attachments in the works. One of one or one of which is going to be an electric hammer attachment. So it's still kind of being designed and worked on and prototyped, but it'll be interesting to see how an electric camera works. I understand the rotary attachments like the brooms, the augers and stuff like that. It's gonna be fairly simple to run with electric motors. But there's also going to be at some point, from what I understand, I've been told by Bobcat, is there is gonna be a hydraulic option that they can add to these machines when they kind of come out to the end user, kind of the owner operator type people who still want to run electric attachments. So I'm assuming that when we look inside this machine, we've got a ton of space. So I think they can put an electric um, motor in there to run a hydraulic pump to run auxiliary hydraulics via electric. So it'll be like electric over hydraulic auxiliaries. You know, Bobcat is kind of the leader in this electric skid steer. You know, it's going to be the first in the world, really, of this type design. There's other electric over hydraulic skid steers out there, but what makes this one unique, it is all electric, 100% electric. You can see these large rams here, ball screw actuators. we got a large ball screw. Well, this is the actuator part here and the, the motor down here, which is a three-phase AC motor inside the chain case here we, we've got like a standard chain case that we have on our other loaders so it is going to be an oil bath chain case but you're going to have electric three-phase motor also running that area and even the tilt cylinders here we can kind of get a better look at the ball screw actuator in the motor here looks a little tight on that tire right there that is really tight so again this one hadn't been released yet and he said that there might even be some design changes on the loader arm itself at some point uh, being that it's a brand new machine and this is a new concept. And the reason I'm pointing that out, that everything's electric. Your, your heating system, your AC system, 
um, the actuators, the motors, and that's different from the excavators. Let's go take a look at the excavator real quick. So the couple of the electric options like the E10, E19 here. And then there's also an E32. But what I want to show you is that on the excavators, we're still running all hydraulic cylinders. So this is basically an electric over hydraulic system. Back here would be the pump and the motor. So we're running basically a hydraulic pump with an electric motor. And this is going to be your battery system and motor controller up here. So really the only coolant that we would have on the machine is just to cool those um, motor controllers. But again, down here, you're just going to have an electric motor inside here running the hydraulic pump. And it's the standard hydraulic pump that we had on the diesel engines. So everything past the electric is going to work just like a standard hydraulic machine. I mean, even the controls are very similar. We still got the little five and a half inch display, the same type jog shuttle system. We just got a different battery meter up here on top, but still have a little key ignition switch. So not much has changed on these and these get, I don't have quite a good answer on runtime on these. It's all subjective. Even on the skid steers versus the excavators, it's all subjective. What kind of work you doing? How much traveling are you doing? How much turning you doing? How deep, how hard's the material? So it's really subjective. So I don't really have a runtime um, on, the, on the excavator. And that's just one thing that everyone wants to know. But the way it's described, you know, it, it again, it just depends on the material that you're trying to dig in and what you're trying to do is, is going to be the runtime. A lot of people beat up or, or have a problem, say that it's not going to work for them to only have four hours of runtime on this machine. Now they run this machine at full load, which is basically 100% capacity, and they get about two and a half hours of runtime, but that is 100% load. Let's say you had a T76 with the diesel engine and you're running at 100 percent peak load you would get two and a half hours out of the electric machine but who does that you know these machines are monitored with telematics and they've got tons and tons and tons of data where a lot of that work time that people are saying they're working seven or eight hours on a machine on a job site they're really not and a lot of that's just idle time or very light work uh, maybe just raising pallets and moving so so the four hours again is kind of it, it's just hard to say how much runtime you're going to get out of something so four hours you know a, a normal job site operating conditions you should get a full day out of this machine of course there's exceptions to that so Oh no, do you? Yes, the mechanic guy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, we're doing a video now. I just got recognized at Con Expo, so that's awesome, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. No, keep up the videos. You I appreciate it. You very much helped. One thing we wanted to point out is that although that run time, you know, they're saying is four hours, this machine is so over-engineered that the future of battery technology is gonna be a big deal. We can literally remove that battery and put in newer technology. So that's something to take in account that the future of the battery technology, of course, you know, then runtime is just gonna completely go on, but the motor controllers, the actuators, everything they put into this machine is way over-engineered. So it makes it interesting. The way it's described to me is that they can do anything with power monitoring on this. They can turn it up to be even more powerful, more lift capacity or lifting capability, I guess, uh, than the new T86. The only problem is when you raise a heavy load like a pallet of brick or something like that, what's holding that load in the air is actual current through that actuator, the current is holding it. But let's say you turn the machine off and you take all that current away from the actuator. Now there's a break on the actuator holding the arms up. Why would you do that? I don't know, but it is something that could happen if the arms were in the air. So if you got a heavy load up there, there's not a spool in a control valve that can hold that up there like a, um, um, a, a load check or something like that. There's literally a break in the actuator that will not hold that without current, that heavy load. Now it'll hold the arms up and light loads and stuff like that, but if it's maxed out, the brakes won't hold.
hold it. So that's why they have to keep the lifting capacity turned up to where it's at, you know. So really, this machine is just turned way down. It's got so much more useful uh, power and capability. So that's one thing to take into account. Let's not knock it. You know, everyone wants to know how long will it go? Four hours, well, that's just useless. But think about the future, the technology where it's gonna go. And yes, it is an expensive machine. Right now it's three times what they call 3X. So that's very expensive. But there, but with, with new technology, manufacturing processes as this machine continues on, they're gonna get that price point down to about 2X. So that's gonna be a huge difference. It's gonna make it more affordable and it's gonna be out in more um, I guess areas, you know, right now Sunbelt Rentals is going to be the main customer who is going to get these machines, but in the future once that price point comes down, you know, when we get those hydraulic options and stuff, it's going to be more useful to the end user. So all things to keep in account, you know, battery technology has to start somewhere. Electric machines are the future and when the technology of course increases on the battery we can take that battery out put a new one in all the other electronics everything else will stay in the same so pretty neat concept